Hey guys, I want to talk about changing out a Nexus 5 internal geared hub for an Alphine 8 internal gear hub. So let's get into it. Now just to highlight, the items I want to cover today are the problems with the Nexus 5, the options I explored, comparing an Alphine 8 and an 11, the installation, the trade-offs I ultimately ended up making, the gearing on the bike, and how things have gone for the first uh, 50 miles or so. Basically, the, the Nexus 5 had a couple of problems. The very first thing I noticed when I got on the bike was that it had a twist shifter. And I'm not a fan of a twist shifter. I've just never liked those. So that didn't feel right. I changed it out for a trigger shifter. Something wasn't right about the trigger shifter. And when I looked at it a little bit more closely, the the dial on the trigger shifter which shows you which gear you're in was actually in the reverse position from what I'm used to and even though that's a small thing it seemed just to really bother me but as I rode the bike more that really didn't become the main problem with the bike the problem was is that the Nexus 5 hub which was on the bike only provided for five gears and the gear range on that bike was 263%, meaning if the lowest gear was one, the highest gear was 2.63. To give you a frame of reference, on a typical 11 by 42 cassette, the range of gears is 382%. So this was quite a bit narrower than an 11 by 42 cassette. And this bike was a cargo bike, uh, and it's a heavy bike, uh, and, you know, you really need low-end gearing and a, and, and a range of gears to be able to ride the bike in Atlanta, where I am, where it's relatively hilly and, and, and you need, you know, a pretty wide variety of gears. So the bottom line, with that Nexus 5 hub, the bike was just no fun to ride. After messing around with the Nexus 5, I concluded, hey, I got I to gotta explore other options. So I looked at possibly getting a roll-off uh, rear hub. But when I looked at the roll-off rear hub, that really wasn't an option for me. The roll-off rear hub was about a thousand bucks or more. And the uh, when you compared that with a Shimano, which the max it looked like I would have to pay to get a an upgraded Shimano was about 300 bucks and probably could get it for less. Uh, the roll-off, you know, was was just really cost, costly. Also, even though you can get parts for the roll-off hub, they're not nearly as accessible or, you know, as price conscious as those for a Shimano. And the roll-off is oil lubricated. These internal geared hubs, obviously there's a lot of moving parts inside those and they need to be well lubricated. There are two ways that they're lubricated. One is oil, the other is grease. I have had some experience with some friends roll off hubs and the oil based or oil lubricated hubs tend to leak a little bit around the gaskets. That oil can get onto the disc rotor or does get onto the disc rotor. And if you're not careful, you can have, you know, some problems with brake contamination. So the reason to get an internal gear hub is part of the reason is they're not, they don't need as much maintenance, but but if oil's leaking out of it, then you've, you've got a maintenance issue that you typically don't have with a derailleur base. So an oil lubricated system is not something I really wanted to get involved with. So then that left me with the Alphine 8 or 11. And in looking at those, there were two big uh, additional benefits beyond their cost. First, the, the uh, dimensions of the Alphine 8 and Alphine 11 are almost identical to or are identical to those of a Nexus 5, meaning that a, a hub switch out, you would could go relatively easily, same spokes, same nipples, uh, you know, nothing unusual with the wheel build. And the second thing about those hubs is in the internal gearing, they have a much lower initial gear. So the, the Nexus 5 first gear is one, one to one, but the initial gearing in the Alphine 8 and Alphine 11 is closer to 0.5. So you have a much lower initial gear, meaning with a big heavy bike, 
it'll be much easier to get the bike rolling and started than it was with the Nexus 5. Now, one thing with the Alfine 8 and 11, you can get those with DI2 connectivity, but I ruled out the DI2 connectivity because as I read about the DI2, apparently the DI2 in these Alfine 8 and Alfine 11, people have experienced some connectivity issues. And what I mean by that is, the connection will work great the first time, but each time you connect it and unconnect it, it tends to degrade. And I know with a re even though I don't like to remove a rear wheel very often, you do have to remove it for chain issues, new tires, tubes, flats. And so I was just did not want to have to deal with uh, having a problem with that connection, which would cause me to have to do a major uh, fix on that hub. So I eliminated DI2 and decided if I was going to get an Alfine 8 or 11, it would be one without DI2. Now you may be wondering why I just didn't convert this to a derailleur-based drivetrain. And this bike is a Momentum Pack Yak, and it's sold by Momentum and other markets using a derailleur. But I contacted Momentum directly and they weren't willing to give me any information that would help me make the conversion, nor were they willing to sell me the parts so that I could make the conversion on my pack yak. So as a result, my only real option was just to stay with some type of internally geared hub. So then my choice was basically down to an Alfine 8 or an Alfine 11. Now, the Alfine 8 has a big thing going for I'm sorry, the Alfine 11 has a big thing going for it, it has a rider gear range. The range on the Alfine 11 is about four, over 400%, whereas that on the Alfine 8 is only about 300%. But the Alfine 8, even though this is mainly anecdotal, doesn't seem to be as durable as the Alfine 8, and it's oil lubricated, similar to the roll-off. Now, the Alfine 8 has a very solid track record. You read numerous posts from people on... Uh, message boards and things where they're getting a long life out of the Alfine 8. Also, the Alfine 8 is grease lubricated. And another important consideration, when you look at the Shimano literature, the Alfine 8 is uh, recommended or approved for use with large heavy cargo bikes. And the Alfine 11, uh, that's not mentioned. So the Alfine 8 can go with a big cargo bike, and that's what I was going to be putting it in. So I decided to go with the Alfine 8 in this situation for the reasons I enumerated above. Now, when I got the Alfine uh, 8 hub and started doing the installation, it was relatively easy and straightforward. Two problems I ran into, uh, the, the spokes and the nipples were 13G. All my other wheel builds have been 12G, so I did not have a nipple wrench that would work. And it took me a while to get the right nipple wrench, even though that should be relatively easy. For some reason, it took me a while to get the right wrench. Second issue I ran into in the wheel build was it's a 24 inch wheel and 36 spoke holes. So the distance between the spokes is, is, is limited and I build wheels with a tension meter, and to get the tension meter in and get an accurate reading under those very tight uh, circumstances was difficult. Now, I eventually figured out how to do it, uh, but that was, uh, it took me a while to figure that out, and once I got it going, it was just like a, a regular wheel build and no problems. There were no issues with the spokes or the nipples or the rim or the hub. Everything came together well, and uh, you know, other than the two issues I mentioned, very straightforward, very easy build. So once I got it all together, the trade-off that I accepted was my gear range is really set up for a class one e-bike. And that is it gives me support up to about 20 miles an hour. My gear range is set up basically to provide 20 miles an hour worth of, of uh, you know, gearing. So the bike is a class three motor on it, and I do not get this, I, I don't have, uh, I don't have enough gears to really get up to 28 miles an hour. So I'm leaving some, uh, some motor support on the table. I really don't need the 28, even though I have it. So I, I did give that up. But what I picked up for that give up 
was I've got reliability. I don't have any oil leaks because it's grease lubricated. And all the gear ratios are well within the specifications uh, indicated by Shimano. So right while we're talking about gearing, it's important to understand that the gear uh, range that I ended up with was over 300%, whereas what I gave up was 263. So I got a pretty big pickup in the gear range and the, the ultimate range with the front cog that I selected and everything is very similar to what you would expect with an 1142 cassette. So that's something I have on many of my other bikes and I'm very comfortable with that know how it works, know how it feels, know how to shift. So that was a, you know, a huge uh, improvement and, and workout in the gearing. What I have is a 38 tooth chainring on the front and an 18 in the rear. Shimano recommends the front chainring ratio to the rear cog be greater than 1.9. At 38 to 18, I'm at 2.1, so I'm well within the specifications. So overall, my gearing and setup on the bike, something I'm very comfortable with, well within specs, and in riding it, it feels just like I normally feel on a bike and you know much, much better gear ratio. So after about 50 miles, it seems to be working really well. Uh, the gearing is much more in line with my comfort level. Uh, the bike is much more fun to ride. Now, I'm not saying a cargo bike is like riding, you know, a full suspension mountain bike or anything, but, but it is a lot more fun, a lot more predictable, a lot easier to, to get your, you know, the, uh, the, 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 the feel of the pedals uh, in line with what I expect and in line with what I'm riding on the bike. So it feels great. And so overall, the bike is much, much more fun to ride. So I would say the conversion overall was well worth it. So I hope I've given you guys something to think about and I'll see you at the top.